Good day, viewer. My name is Bamidele A. Jacobs, and I'm here this day to talk about uh, gender-based violence. This is in continuation of a lawyer's alert series on legal literacy. It is good to start with uh, what a gender-based violence is. Basically, people look at uh, gender-based violence as that type of violence that an individual suffers, or which happens to an individual, as a result of is being a male or a female, or belonging to a particular gender. That is, any form of violence that anyone suffers, simply because it's a male or a female, is referred to as or gender-based violence. In some quarters, this same gender-based violence is referred to as or violence against women. And probably that coinage comes or simply because a lot of people look at uh, or, or, or women and children as the one at the receiving end of uh, gender-based violence. That is, women and girls are, are seen by those ones that use that coinage as being the ones that suffer more incidences of uh, gender-based violence. But it is good to look at gender-based violence as that which happens to everybody. In fact, in modern day, men and even boys are also at the receiving end of uh, gender-based violence. And so, in the wider context, it is, it is, it is correct to see gender-based violence as happening to everybody. That is, everyone suffers gender-based violence in our society. Now, when we talk about gender-based violence, we do not only mean when or, or somebody suffers this violence physically. The threat of violence in itself is also part of the violence itself. That is, if there is anything that has the color uh, appearance of uh, a threat of violence, a, 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 a threat of, 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 of suffering something, then it falls within or, or the definition of uh, a gender-based violence. Any threat of harm at all constitutes gender-based violence. Now, and so, gender-based violence has a lot of similarity has a lot of intersection with violation of uh, an individual's fundamental human right. But the only th basic difference between or, or violation of uh, the fundamental right of a person and a gender-based violence is that in the case of uh, a gender-based violence, it comes because an individual is a man, is a male or a female, that is, simply because an individual belongs to a particular gender. And that is why he, he, has been, he has been put in a position to actually suffer the kind of violence that has occurred to him or her. But in the case of the violation of a fundamental human right, it has nothing to do with the gender of the person concerned. It could have happened to anyone. So that is basically the difference. But aside this, they have more similarities than differences. And so basically, even any or, 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 or harm that an individual suffers that is gender-based will also amount to a violation of the person's or right or fundamental right. And so, and, 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 so basically, who again, who are these ones that suffer or gender-based violence? We have basically said all suffer gender-based violence. But then, the color and the forms of violence that we suffer differ and vary from gender to gender. And that is what makes it, what makes a particular violence a gender-based one. Having said all this, it would be incorrect or unfair of us not to admit that women are chid and children, and children this time around, particularly girls, 
are the ones that suffer gender-based violence more. And the reason for this are not the reasons are not far-fetched. One, there is a unequal distribution of power in a society. When you go from society to society, what one sees or witnesses is unequal and unfair distribution of uh, power. Usually, man is put at an advantaged position. Man is seen as 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 having has been at the receiving end of a higher pass than women and so that's that makes women prone naturally more to gender-based violence than their men counterparts then apart from that the the socio-economic status of men from society to society are higher and sincerely it would be good for us to admit that it is worse when it comes to underdeveloped and developing societies. We have better distribution of this in developed societies. But in societies like us, we will discover that social economic distribution of uh, uh, income or power is not equitable. That is, it, it is not the same for both male and female. And so that puts women and girls at a disadvantaged position, so to say. And so for these reasons, we will discover that women and children are put at a position where they are more prone to uh, gender-based violence. Now, it, 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 it will be convenient for us to begin to look at in what forms and shapes could this violence come or appear? When, if we look at the family or the domestic setting, we will discover that day in, day out, we witness a lot of uh, what we call assaults and uh, batteries, where one of these one spouse probably punches, pushes, beats, and even bites, spits on the other one. We have been we are living witnesses to all forms of this happening around us. Wherever we live in this kind of our own society, we we'll see all these forms of uh, gender-based violence happen around us. In fact, in some places, a day hardly passes without a case of, a serious case of a gender-based violence happening around us. And so, and apart from that, this could also come in the form of uh, domestic rape. I'm sure a lot of us will be surprised to hear this. And that is because in our society, our laws does not actually recognize domestic or, or rape or marital rape, so to say, marital rape. And so we, we take this for granted. But then these things happen day in and day out around us. We also have things such as uh, name calling, where one person calls the other person ugly names. I mean, this also constitute and are part of uh, the gender-based violence that we are talking about. Then there are also other forms of uh, intimidation coming from one person against the other. We, some make just gestures like clenching of fists, probably that sends uh, threats and shivers down the spines of uh, the other party, interrogation of children, denial of access to the use of a certain property of the family like probably a wife does something and the husband says please you cannot go out with uh, that particular family car that's a good example or where the husband drives away the wife from the home i mean says this house was not built by you and so i don't want you in this house any longer or temporarily you should have to relocate from this house I mean, deprivation of access to the use of family property. All these are part of the, in fact, major part of the domestic violence that we are talking about. And also we have a case, cases where grabbing, these are things we take for granted sometimes. Some one, one person grabs the other, probably by the neck of the chair or, or the dress the person puts on, grabs the other person, 
That's part of the violence, honestly. Then, just as I've said, pushing. Then we also have twisting, burning, and uh, even the use of weapons. We have had cases where one person will have had to use things such as kitchen knife, probably table in the house, probably a stick somewhere that can cause a lot of uh, damage and injury to the other person. I mean, all these are part of or, or, or domestic, uh, I mean, gender-based violence that can happen in the family or at, at the domestic level. Then let's look at the community level. Now, we have sexual harassment everywhere. In fact, in workplaces where even without the consent, even where you know the other person does not like it, somebody comes up with expressions that is likely to cause a discomfort for the other person. Domestic violence in workplaces, in schools, in universities, in our colleges, everywhere. I mean, all these are part of the domestic violence we're talking about. Gang rapes and even you know, individual or single rapes, if I'm permitted to call it that way. All that are considered part of uh, domestic violence. What about uh, trafficking in persons where probably guests are arranged together, deceived and uh, trafficked even from one part of the country to another part and even from uh, 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 this country to other countries. I mean, for various purposes. I mean, all those against their will, against their consent. Even when that consent is given, most times it is given fraudulently. It is, it is not an informed consent. It is given probably because the person does not, does not understand the implications and what is ahead of him or her. I mean, all that constitute uh, or the domestic, I mean, the uh, gender-based violence that we are talking about. Then we also have issues of uh, forced prostitution. I mean, where people are forced into prostitution, in fact, there are cases in this country where some women and men take it as their own business, where they, 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 they arrange guests, especially move them from one part of the country to another country, take them to brothels, take them to hotels, where they use them for prostitution or purposes. All that constitute a gender-based violence. And mention should also be made of female genital mutilation and the cutting. I mean, this practice, you viewers, you find it difficult to believe with me, still go on in some parts of this country and in other parts of Africa where or, or, or women are taught or, to be better off when they have their genitals mutilated one way or the other or caught even at extreme levels. Then we have harmful widowhood practices. I mean, where a woman is expected to cut her hair when the husband dies, for example, and the same will not apply to a man where the wife dies. You know, all these are gender-based violence. Even when, even where a woman is never in tune or is never comfortable with such a practice, she is forced to do that. Or even deprivation of a property where a man dies, the woman, the widow that is left behind, is deprived of a property by even or, or, or the bro brothers and other family members, relations of the, the deceased or the dead husband. All these are viol gender based or violence that we must uh, be very, very careful to guide against. What about other uh, practices such as uh, virginity tests? There are some societies today where if a woman is being prepared for marriage, then they go through rites such as a uh, virginity test where the woman is supposed to go through a very crude and even an unconfirmed scientific test to determine her virginity or otherwise. I mean, all this is whether you know it, viewers or not, constitute and are part, strictly part of a gender-based violence. And apart from that, in, in societies, even though in our society, abortion is never legalized, but even in some parts of the world, in societies where abortions are legalized, Honestly, people are still forced to go into abortion, even against their will. Even in our society, whether we like it or not, where all this is going secretly, where all this is going without, outside the eye of the law, would require that a lot of girls are still forced to go into abortion, either by their parents, either by member society, close relations, probably out of uh, 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 whatever the society will say, or whatever society, how society will look at them. Then we should also look at a uh, false exposure to pornography. 
and incest. Somebody goes, brings uh, probably a nephew or brings, uh, I mean, whatever name called, I mean, somewhere that is related, whether by affinity or by consanguinity, whether by blood or by marriage, they are related in a way he goes into sexual relations into that, that person. Incest, I mean, all that constitutes uh, gender-based violence one way or the other. Then we must not forget about uh, the psychological or the emotional type of violence that society can also uh, witness from time to time. Then here we begin to talk about threatening expressions where somebody say, if you do not leave my sight, I kill you. Or if you do not go from this house, when I come back, you will regret yourself. I mean, all those are threatening statements, expressions. And honestly, whether they have not inflicted any physical injury, they are capable of uh, inflicting a lot of psychological and emotional or, 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 or effects on those to whom all these expressions are actually or, or made. And apart from that, we, we, we also see things on a daily basis, such as uh, humiliation before even family members. I mean, this is common in our society where the, the man who, who looks at himself as uh, the big boss over there, probably someone's uh, family members and uh, feels it is time and it's an opportunity to actually humiliate the other partner. That is uh, talking about uh, the wife, I mean, before those uh, family members. And two, from parents to children, it's, it is true that a, a, a parent, by law, is, is, is allowed to use minimal chastisement against his or her children. But then, when all these things go beyond a minima, where, for example, where a father beats uh, probably a child or a ward that stays with him, or an apprentice under him, a man brings an or a woman, probably in the name of chastising an apprentice, goes, does that so much that the, the apprentice is now left with scars, or the child is now left with scars all over his or her body at the end of the chastisement, where some will even use uh, pepper, pour it, hot water, pour it on the, on the child or, or on, the, on the apprentice, all in the name of chastisement or trying to discipline. All these are gender-based violence, and they are never allowed or encouraged or, or law frowns at all this generally. And even society frowns at them beyond the even or, or law. Then we, we now look at who are the perpetrators of this gender-based violence. The one that readily comes to mind is all of us, individuals, are guilty of this. But I must stress, in our own society, if we narrow this down to our society here, men, especially in marriage relationship, husbands, honestly, are more guilty of this. Thank God I'm also a man. So I will not be accused of being biased. Through the length and breadth of this country, everywhere we go in our society, in fact, men are more guilty. Because oftentimes we do this. And surprisingly, we are still going to go into that. Surprisingly, law appears to sanction some of these things. And, and so this is this the time has come for all of us to begin to look at even our laws, even practices in our societies, and begin to speak against these things and begin to create this awareness and begin to send the message across the length and breadth of our society to say it, the time has come for us to do what? To begin to look at the of ways of putting an end to all, all this because they never do any of us any good. Then, uh, apart from that too, we have even that perpetrated by communities. When you say things, there are people, there are, there are cultural practices, honestly, that ought not to be any longer. They have, they have outlived their usefulness. In fact, they are not doing anybody any good any longer. But some communities still cherish and hold on sacrosanctly these practices. Even when they are aware, even when the mind is and the conscience is telling them, look, this is no longer good. They still hold on to it for one reason or the other. Probably because some of these ones that are seen as uh, the, 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 the ones who are the custodians of uh, these cultural practices benefit a lot from them. So they will not, they find it difficult to let these things go. And so many of these cultural practices are out of date. And so communities, certain communities are major perpetrators of uh, gender-based 
or, 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 or violence. And honestly, they do things that will not allow society to begin to drift away from such practices. So then the, the, the one that will surprise all of us is that states, the state itself, by the laws that we still have in place, are also part of the perpetrators of uh, this gender-based violence. Honestly, we'll, that is where we're going to go immediately after now. We're still going to talk about some of our laws, basic, point out some basic uh, or aspects of our laws that are not encouraging deviation from uh, all this violence, rather that encourage them. Then, I must not forget, before the women are happy that I've not mentioned their name, in some cases too, women are women are also perpetrators, are also part of the perpetrators of this uh, violence. Because there have been cases where women have had to even use a violence in the form of even, in fact, to the extent of using weapons, which have even resulted in deaths of some men in societies. We, we have seen such cases, and we have been living witnesses to them. We have heard so much about them. We have heard reports of them. And in fact, as we speak right now, about two or three that are known nationally, are even still pending in our different courts, where or, or even husbands died out of uh, violence perpetrated by their wives. So now I, I simply want us to look at some aspect of our laws, one or two, that encourage gender-based violence, or that could be said to be perpetrators of uh, gender-based violence. When Let's look at our criminal code, for example. Now, if we look at section 357, we may not, some of us that are non-lawyers may not bother ourselves with uh, this. That section defines rape as an unlawful kind of knowledge of a woman or a girl. We can begin to look at that. That is to say that that section 357 of our criminal code does not believe that a man can be raped. So, so it limits rape to women and girls. And so a man or a boy cannot be raped in the eye of that session of the law. But you and I know that that is not the truth. But there is good news for all of us over this. Now, the new uh, uh, Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act that has been uh, 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 promulgated, that has been enacted by the National Assembly has corrected this. And so, by the provision of that act, boys, men and boys can also be raped. So that, is, that should be good news to all of us. But unfortunately too, that law does not become automatically applicable throughout the nation Nigeria. As it is, it is only applicable to the, automatically to the federal capital territory. And so it is not left for all the other saved states of the Federation to begin to look at the possibility of domesticating that law. And I must be sincere with you, some few states have, de have also domesticated that. But then there are so few. So we still need more states to do what? To begin to look at the possibility of uh, domesticating that gender against persons prohibition act of 2015 very very important and so that will go a long way to correcting that session 257 of the criminal code that says it is only a woman or a girl that can be raped then the other thing we must also look at is that the same session six of the same law of the same criminal code simply discounting as the possibility of a, a marital rape because it defines it defines unlawful carnal knowledge as, as, as a carnal connection other than between a husband and a wife. Which means no matter how a particular husband has gone about probably having a, a, a sexual connection with his wife, it can never be regarded as rape. Whereas we do know that most times, even against the will, against the concept of uh, the woman, certain men, or against the concept of man, certain women go trying to have carnal connection with the other person. So this is another aspect of our law that lawyers and NGOs and all organizations that are, are, are related to this, 
must begin to look at, must begin to work at, to have this kind, of, this session of the law repealed. Very, very important. Then, we should also look at this all, again, section 55 of our penal code. That is the, 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 the criminal, the, the law that guides and regulates criminality in the northern part of this country, section 55, says a man can actually chastise his wife as, as long as he, he cannot he cannot he cannot progress to the to, to the extent to, to, to becoming uh, to become to have physical uh, um, to have physical bruises i mean a man is permitted to do that that is a man can chase that his wife actually which means a man can come probably and use cane to beat his wife that's what that aspect of the law is saying and so if he does that then it, it's, it's not against law he has not committed anything called crime that is what that law is actually telling us. And so, section 55, I repeat, section 55, subsection 1 of the penal code, that is where, or what that aspect says. Then, the last but not the least, of this is, a, if we look at regulation 42, for example, regulation 52, for example, and regulation 118 of the police regulations, now, he talks about anybody that is to be recruited, any, any female that is to be recruited into the Nigerian police must be unmarried. The same is never said of men. The same is never said of men that is going to be recruited into the Nigerian police must be unmarried. It only says that against uh, the women. And so, this is seriously an infraction, a serious infraction, I repeat, on the rights of women. It is basically, it, it is purely a gender-based violence. It is really violence against women. And so we must look at that aspect. And that is not only that, the, our, the, the laws establishing our various paramilitary organizations like the customs, the immigration, and all the rest ones also have provisions similar to that of uh, the police regulation that I pointed out. And so, if the same, this is being said about uh, women be, being unmarried before they can be recruited, why is the same thing not said of uh, men? And that is the aspect we are trying to point out there. So, very, very important. And so, who, who, who must have roles? That is the next point we're going to take. Who must have roles in bringing an end to gender-based violence? I'm going to talk about lawyers first. Lawyers are not those associated with uh, our legal system, all those that have one role or the other. Lawyers, I tell you, my colleagues, we must rise up. Enough of this, our uh, standing aloof. Enough of this, our being far from where the things happen. We must stand firm. I have just spoken of uh, a law passed by the National Assembly, which becomes automatically applicable at the Federal Capital Territory. Violence against pre persons prohibition bill. And mean, anywhere we are, in any part of Nigeria where we are, in any part of the world where we are, where, where, if we discover that no such law exists in our immediate environment, and that is applicable in our immediate environment, it is time for us to begin to put our hands into action to see that this kind of law is domesticated throughout Nigeria. It is a good law, and it is law that has a lot, a huge contribution to contribute into humanity. Very, very important. And so, as lawyers, we must begin to work at that right away, and no waste of time. Then, the media. The media must become up and doing. I have always said this. Enough is enough of this invent reporting. The media must begin to put more attention and more consideration to investigative reporting. I mean, where we try to dig and get to the bottom of issues and unravel issues and, and, and bring them out the way they should be. So society will get to know some of these ills. We get to know some of these hidden things. Now, the, the danger in concentrating on invent reporting is this. Somebody that is organizing an event and is inviting you to come and to come and cover that event will not will most probably hide 
all the ills, who most probably hide all the things he does not want the public to see. And you as the media man or woman will never see such things. But when it is investigative reporting, I can tell you, you are going to dig into it yourself, you are going to see things for yourself, and you are going to get and dig out these ills as they are. I mean, un uncensored. That is the language. So then NGOs and other civil society organizations, it is time for us to do more. We have done enough, and we are doing enough. I must commend all of us. But it is time for us to do more. Let us begin to see aspects of our laws first that are not good, that are promoting gender-based violence, and see how all these things can be repealed, and see how all these things can be amended appropriately. Thank you very much, and we'll see you again.